and welcome to the Thirsty Bitches Podcast, where we talk about anything under the sun, from books, entertainment, self-help, and even a little spice. I'm Victoria. I'm Kira. And I'm Catalin. And today we're here to do some Reddit stories from the Am I the Asshole subreddit. I'm very excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. Kira's roommate, Emily, fortunately picked these out for us. Yeah, so my best friend and roommate, she (laughs) loves, she loves Am I the Assholes. She listens to all the different types of podcasts. We, her and I listen to the Two Hot Takes podcast together all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, She loves Reddit. She (laughs) flew to Virginia for work um, this past week, Mm -hmm. and she said she paid for Wi-Fi so that she could read Reddit stories on her flight. Like, she... (laughs) loves reddit I that's a her, long flight i keep telling her i'm like you need to go to like reddit anonymous like <laughs> mm-hmm. it's becoming an addiction i don't know um so she took the liberty of finding us some reddit stories for emma the asshole so the three of us have not read these we have no idea what we're walking into this is gonna mm-hmm. be all like true to reaction yep. Um, so I'm very excited for it because Emily picks some, she can pick some pretty good ones because she's nice. been doing this for a couple of years. She's been reading these things for a while. Um, so she, she knows I'm when so she excited. finds a good one. So we're going to be doing that. But before we get into that, we're going to do our quenchable moments. And if you're new here, a quenchable moment is something happy or exciting that's happened to us over the last week or so that we want to share with each other and with you. So to start us off, Victoria, what was your quenchable moment? So my quenchable moment is... This episode is being recorded in June, and it does not come out until August. But I just finished recovering my work chair. I'm so happy that I did this. I have a chair that's like, it's styled to look like a wingback style library chair. So it was covered in like faux leather. And it was great. I I love it. It's super comfortable. A lot of people would be like, just replace it because it's so worn down. Like my cats have scratched the hell out of it, whatever. But it's so comfortable. The only issue is, is that it also has like the buttons in it. And the buttons Mm. are in the seat, which is stupid. Why would you put them there? It's uncomfortable. (laughs) So I had like this little square fabric that I just sat on the chair. (laughs) So I didn't have a button going up my butthole. Anyways, (laughs) I I decided to recover it because I just finished my desk. I put up Mm. new nightstands. And it just didn't look right with my desk. And I did it. And it looks really good. I'm very impressed with myself. Yay. You know what? I was thinking about this whole time you were talking about it. Mm-hmm. You would do so well on that HGTV show, Flea Market Flip. Oh, I love doing stuff like that. Because my mom loves watching that. Like, she's always mm-hmm. has it on. And so, like, basically two teams go to the flea market in their area, and they have to buy things, and then they have to take it back to this warehouse, and they have to mm-hmm. repurpose it and sell it for more. And whoever yeah. has, like, whoever gets the most money from their thing wins, like, $5,000 or something. Mm-hmm. And I think that you would oh, have shit. a really great time doing it. Yeah, I love stuff like that. Well, like, most of my furniture is from, like, either estate sales or flea markets or thrift stores, um, or I've built myself, or have built the the main parts of myself so mm-hmm. i just you know that's why i think you would love being on that it. show it's just it's fun for me i like you it should, you should apply maybe <laughs> maybe one day but yeah i i didn't like sew it like reupholster like you should i just glued it and stapled stuff but i think it did a pretty good job you know making it look like yeah it came like that nice. if you squint <laughs> and you're I've not done that too with close chairs. to it you close one eye down. Turn your head sideways. <laughs> close the other eye. It looks Stand good from ten feet away. So, but yeah, I'm very pleased with myself, and it's nice. It, I love that chair. It's just so comfortable. I didn't want to get rid of it, and I good. spent like three hundred dollars on it. So, I've been doing a lot of projects. So, I'm glad yeah. that you're enjoying it. Yeah, and I had enough fabric left over to recover my little footstool. So now it matches. <laughs> nice, perfect. <laughs> it's great. Anyway. Well, that's exciting. Catalin, what was your quenchable moment? Uh, my quenchable moment is that my roommate has a cricket and she made a shirt for herself. And she every also time, kind of every let time me... you say your roommate has a cricket, I know, and we've talked about it. I know what you're, you mean, but I'm just like, <laughs> on, she has a lucky cricket. <laughs> no, she doesn't have a lucky cricket. <laughs> every but, time. So, she made a shirt for herself. We went to Michael's. I got my own supplies for it. Um, it's a shirt I'm wearing. It says, you're never alone if you have demons. And I just love it. 
Oh man, that's great. <laughs> I feel like it's applicable. Which cricket does she have? The lucky one. Huh. I don't know. <laughs> It's big. It's like it's big one. this long. I yeah. need to send you the covers that I want to do for Kira. I don't know that my joy can do because it's too small. Mm. So I might have to send you the cloth <laughs> so you can okay. just print it out for me. Uh, I don't know. Like print it onto the cloth? No, it doesn't go onto oh. the cloth, but you oh. print, you, you print like the, the panels sticker. out. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you print yeah, it sure. out in like one big piece. So Yeah, because we can do 12 by 12 guys. sheets. So yeah, I don't know. What's I happening. mean, anyway, some of them you, if you have the foiling kit, you can do it on, directly on the cloth, but that's like a whole thing. Yeah, no, I know. But anyways, Kira, what is your questionable moment? <laughs> my questionable moment has to do with the books that I got from Vanessa, my fancy new Akatar books. Those weren't the only mm-hmm. ones that she sent me. She also, she, she also sent me her copies of the original covers of Ember of the Ashes. Oh, oh that's right. She what did. Yeah. Right. Nice. And nice. they're in such good condition too. Like they're beautifully like mm-hmm. kept. Um obviously it's an older book, so like the the paper is gonna be look worn, mm-hmm. but like uh look look at that. And it's like Our it's co- not the original I have that cover. It's not the original uh, U.S. cover. It's the original U.K. cover. So mm-hmm. I yeah. have that cover. It's so good. Yeah, it's the same design. It's just it doesn't okay. have the the foiling mm-hmm. on it. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. I was I was like I had the hardback of that. Yeah, no, it's just it's the same. It's the same design. It's just there are okay. little extras. There are my babies running through the little hole. <laughs> <laughs> my Aunt Elias, I love you so much. Oh man, I can't wait to have a large enough space to have a library so I can bind my own custom versions of those. Look at how cute they are. They're very cute. Yeah, they look good. I was so excited when I opened the box. It was funny though because you know how I told you guys that my half price bookstore had the hardcover of the first book? Mm -hmm. And I was like, I want it, but I'm on a book buying ban, so I can't get it. Vanessa messaged me and she was like, don't don't buy it because <laughs> she was already planning on sending me this oh she's like just please don't she's like please don't buy it <laughs> I'm like, why why am i not buying it so i had an inkling that she was sending me the first one but when i saw the second one in the box i was like i was so excited such a so excited such a good okay. friend sending me the books from all the way across the pond yeah man I'm just staring at the copies of Harry Potter that I have to find for you. Like, Jesus Christ. Staring at my floor. It'll be all right. (laughs) I know. I need you to send those back to me. Actually, no, I don't want you to send those back to me. I need to find You have a bigger pile to look at. So as you guys know, I've been on a health journey. And with that, I've been looking for tools and products to help me get my health back in check. One of the things I've really been focusing on is staying hydrated. And a product that's really helped me with that is Liquid IV. In just one stick, you get five essential vitamins and two times faster hydration than with water alone. It's also come in super clutch when I'm out and about, and I realize I haven't hydrated well enough. Plus, it's super convenient to keep in my bag or in my car in case of an emergency. Right now, you can get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code STAYTHIRSTY at checkout. That's 20% off of anything you order when you shop for better hydration today using promo code stay thirsty at liquidiv.com. Stay thirsty, bitches. Anyways, yeah. So, like I said at the beginning of the episode, I know my hair is doing something crazy right now, but uh, we're doing Am I the Asshole Stories. I'm really excited because I also really like to listen to Am I the Asshole podcasts. So I'm curious to see if I've actually heard any of these before. Um, But we're going to each read two stories is what we have we have two stories for each of us depending on what the time looks like um i figured each of us would do one Mm -hmm. because we're going to discuss what we think regardless yeah um we're gonna have our own opinions and so we'll see what the time looks like and then if we have time for more we can continue yeah yeah so kira why don't you kick us off okay so this one was posted 19 hours ago um and uh top vote is asshole Okay. 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 So 
am I the asshole because I disrespected my father-in-law in his own home? My wife and I are currently living with her father temporarily. He's a very fastidious person, which I respect. He likes to devote every Saturday to cleaning. I picked up my oldest child from my ex Friday night. He is nine. My father-in-law wanted him to participate in cleaning the whole house today. I said he didn't need to because he hadn't participated in creating any mess. My father-in-law insisted everyone in the house needs to participate, but I said no, that he needed to unpack and settle in. My father-in-law was very insistent. He said that under his roof, he would insist upon his way of doing things. My wife said we need to respect her father and abide by his rules when we are in this house. I said no. I said he can kick me out if he wants, but I make the decision for my son, and the answer is no. My father-in-law has been furious all day and demanded an apology. I apologize, but I still didn't make my son participate in the cleaning. My wife is upset with me for upsetting her father. I just feel that I made the decisions for my children regardless of whose home I am in. Does that belief make me an asshole? Thoughts? Okay, hold on. Rewind. Remember, so, top vote right now is asshole. So, cl- clarify for me. They're, where are they at? So, they are living with his current wife's father. Okay. Mm-hmm. And how old is the son? Nine. Nine. And he's saying that the son doesn't have to help clean up. So, yes. Because he so didn't make any of the mess during the week. He got picked up Friday night, and the father-in-law cleans on Saturdays. And the dad's the asshole. And the, the dad is the one saying, am I the asshole for saying my son doesn't have to help clean up my father-in-law's house? Okay. So, I think everybody sucks here. And the reason why I say this... Kid. <laughs> yeah. The reason why I say this is because I grew up in a household where ritually every Saturday we got up and cleaned. Mm-hmm. And it was awful. And I hated it. But also, I lived in that house. Even though I wasn't, like, actively making a mess, like, it got messy. Um of course, now my mom is much calmer and much less neurotic. Like, we did not have to go to the degree that we did every Saturday that we cleaned. But um, I think if somebody is living in that space, they can help clean up a little bit. I'm not mm-hmm. saying that the kid yeah. has to get down on their hands and knees and scrub the floor, but, like, they can help put the dishes in the dishwasher or mm-hmm. make sure that their laundry gets put up in their bedroom. Or make sure that their toys are put away. Like, there are things mm-hmm. that that child can do to help in the cleanup and the maintenance of the house. Yeah. That are within the realm of what a nine-year-old should be doing to help maintain that space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, because if he was there Friday night, he probably helped. Like, he probably had dinner with them and he probably got some toys out and mm-hmm. uh-huh. he probably has dirty laundry. Yeah, I'm not saying so, that the kids should get up and, like, scrub. No. But, like... Yeah. Um, so, it looks like a lot of the top comments are saying that the father um, missed the opportunity to teach his son how to clean uh, a house, like, a resident that he resides in. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're they're just, like, really upset that the father was like, you didn't let your son clean. Like, you didn't let your son make that decision. Yeah. Um, there is one comment, though, because the father-in-law cleans all day. Mm-hmm. And I think I agree with this one comment saying, like, you know, the kid doesn't have to clean all day, but, like, maybe, like, an hour, like, clean his mm-hmm. space, help with the kitchen, yeah. maybe yeah. some yard work or something. Um, yeah. I think I'll, I would agree with you, Victoria. I think everyone's the asshole here. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think it's appropriate for the father-in-law to be so upset about a nine-year-old not cleaning. Not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, as, especially as somebody who currently lives with a nine-year-old. Yeah. She's just not going to do it. Because you don't like, know, like, you don't know what kind of situation that the nine-year-old, like, we don't know what the situation the nine-year-old lives in with his mm-hmm. mom, mm-hmm. you know? We don't know what that's like. Um, I mean, that yeah. information was not given. Um, so, like, there could be more nuance to, like, why the father doesn't exactly. want his kid to be cleaning his father-in-law's house. Like, maybe mm-hmm. it's just he does a lot over with his mom. 
like there's I feel like there's so much more to it that we're not given but Mm -hmm. ultimately the way that the story is being played like it just seems like both dads are just like in the wrong here yeah they're both being buttheads at this point because like I said as somebody that currently lives with a nine-year-old I I know what the situation is when when my sister's with her dads she just rips and runs and does whatever Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so with us like it ends up being double strictness Mm -hmm. which sucks so at least when she's just with me I'm like okay you've sat here and ate your food dishes in the sink trash in the trash we're Gucci or like if we have a cleaning day I'm like make sure that the stuff that belongs in your room is in your room you make your bed we're done because I just, I know, as a nine-year-old, she doesn't have the attention span to sit there yeah. and clean all day anyway. Especially nine-year-olds like, in this climate. Like, when we yeah. were nine, it was different. I don't have the attention span to clean all day. <laughs> well, no, as adults. Like I said, I, I also just remember, I remember it just being fucking torture. Getting up mm-hmm. at eight o'clock every Saturday, deep cleaning the house, scrubbing the floors, vacuuming everything. It sucked. I also want to say, like, I feel like this also comes down to you know, the discussion that we've been seeing with a lot of millennial parents and how they don't like that their parents are trying to parent their grandkids. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this falls in line. Like, obviously, the father-in-law isn't this child's direct grandfather, Mm -hmm. but he's trying to take it upon himself to Mm -hmm. make this kid do something when, Mm -hmm. again, like, I, I would agree with this father. Like, he is the father of a child and he gets to make the decisions for his kid. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, like, there is a limit to that, but I think he made a really good point. Like, you know, it is my kid, and I, he, he's taking responsibility for that, of t- being the father and laying down the line and being like, look, I'll clean, but, like, my kid's not yeah. going to. Yeah, I think the the father-in-law is an asshole for setting the expectation that the nine-year-old needs to help clean for an entire day, and the dad mm-hmm. is an asshole for not at least instilling some sense of maintaining your space in the sun. Mm-hmm. or the, the kid and again not to the degree that the father-in-law is wanting just like okay you had no. dinner help with the dishes and we're mm-hmm. done mm-hmm. so it's easy it's a it's it's and an like, easy enough thing to do my question is and i would love like if the author would do an update of like you know how often do you have your kid with you like, how often is he away from his mother's house? Like, do you get him for the week? Yeah. Or do you only get him, like, one weekend every On month? Weekends. Like, I yeah. feel like this, that could play a larger role in it. Like, you know, having the kid spend some time with his father rather than cleaning if you only get two days a month together. Like, I feel like yeah. there's so much more to what we know. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I, uh, everyone's the asshole here. Um... I feel like there, we need to know more before we can, like, make a full decision because I think it's weird that the father-in-law is, like, making a kid that's not his mm-hmm. clean the day, like, the mm-hmm. little of the morning after he gets there. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, every family's yeah, different. There's just better ways to go about it. And also, anyway. like, how long has this older man known this nine-year-old? Like, is this a new Ooh, marriage? Yeah. How, how often have you met? Is this like some? Are you are you a grandfather figure to him? Like, I feel like I need to know more information. I wish there was an update. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, YTA right. or no? E- Everybody sucks. Everybody sucks. Yeah, yeah. is the yeah yeah one of the good. Alrighty, on to the next. Catalan saw you boo. Yes. Okay. This one is called, Am I the Asshole for Keeping a Secret Bank Account for My Husband? Ooh. <clears throat> I'm just going to read it verbatim. So it says, hey, Reddit. Uh, let's start. Go. <laughs> uh, hey, Reddit. I find myself in a rather complicated situation. And I'm seeking your judgment on whether I am the asshole or not. Recently, my husband, 30 male, decided to leave me, 28 female, after finding that I had been keeping a secret bank account from him throughout our relationship. I need an outside perspective to help me through this issue. For beginners, my mom went through a, ve- through a very abusive marriage before she finally gained the courage to leave. She always said that having a separate secret account was necessary for her escape plan, and she advised me to do the same in case I ever found myself in a similar situation. I opened a secret bank account a few years ago while I was working and started quietly saving money without my husband's knowledge after taking her words to heart. Now to the present. My husband had no idea about this account until he stumbled upon some documents while searching for his birth certificate. 
He was very furious and hurt. He said he felt he was feeling betrayed. Upon confronting me about it, he expressed his he expressed his disappointment, highlighting how he was working two jobs to support us for the past three years. Now I could have contributed financially during times of hardship after I lost my job. His frustration stems from a few incidents in our lives when things were financially tough for us. There was a period when his car broke down. He had to rely on public transportation to get to him from work. We also faced several other challenging circumstances, circumstances where I could have potentially alleviated some of the financial burden by contributing from my savings. And I want to clarify that I love my husband and have never and have never intended to cause him any harm. I genuinely believe that having the secret account was a safety net, a precautionary measure based on my mother's experiences. But I now understand how my actions may have hurt him and undermined the trust in our relationship. So Reddit, here's where I need your judgment. Am I the asshole for hiding the secret bank account for my husband, even if my intentions were to protect myself based on my mother's advice? I feel like I lost everything in my life because I was trying to protect myself for a situation that has affected so many other women. And what's that one it's rated? From, yeah, it's from two days ago. What do you mean rated? It should say under the oh, title it's if, it's, if it's like asshole, not the asshole. I I'm not on the app. I'm just on the browser. Oh, let me let me look. Um, I mean, uh, it's upvoted one point one thousand times. Jesus. <sighs> See. This oh, is yeah, that tough. one doesn't that one doesn't have one. Yeah. Wild. This, this one's tough because I understand her reasoning for wanting the account and mm-hmm. she's 100% valid in that. But if she's gone on after however long they've been does it say how long they've been together? No. I don't, I don't think it says how much was in the account either. No. So and that's a lot of the comments are saying that they understand having the separate account, but mm-hmm. like Yeah. My thought process goes to Mm -hmm. she says that she loves her husband very much. So they must be in like a very secure relationship. I think at this point in time, like if they've been together for a while and my assumption is like if they're married, they've been together for minimum five years. Mm -hmm. Um, If they're married and she is loving her relationship, she loves her husband. She wants to spend the rest of her life with him. I don't think a secret account is needed at that point. Like if you mm-hmm. find yourself in a abusive relationship, like her mother was like, yes, I do think that, you know, having that is really beneficial. Yeah. Um, I think starting it when they first started their relationship was smart, but it, yes. she should have come clean about it at some point if she was yeah. feeling secure in her relationship. Yeah. yeah. If once, once she got to the point where she realized, okay, I'm safe with this person. They aren't taking advantage of me. They aren't abusing me we're going through financial hardships. Now is the time to share like, Hey, I started this nest egg when we got together, like we can use this. Mm -hmm. I think that is where she is in the wrong. Yeah. And I'm not saying that, you know, you, that people don't change over time because they can, he could potentially become abusive. Um, and maybe she can set aside even a little portion of that nest egg to just have Mm -hmm. on the very off chance or on the off chance that it does happen. Yeah. But, if they were in such a financial burden that that money would have helped and saved them both a lot of heartache, she should have used it. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't blame him for being upset. So. Yeah. Do I think it's a leap that he's leaving her? Leaving her. Yeah. I think he's, his reaction is extreme. Yeah. Um, I don't think he is acknowledging her side as to why she started this, you know, her history of why she needed it. I think he's, mm-hmm. I think from how she has described it, he is sounding very self-centered mm-hmm. um, and selfish in this instance. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, like you guys were going through hardships. He was working two jobs. She could have helped. But at the same time, like she, she has trauma from watching her mother be in an abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. And, you know, her mother instilled this knowledge into her and that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, if that's something that some men have experienced and they understand, but in most cases, men don't realize that women, see, these are the fears that women have. So, Mm -hmm. like, I know I have a trust. Mm -hmm. I have a will and trust Mm -hmm. that I, I put money into that, you know, my significant other will never be able to touch unless they are the beneficiary. So, yeah. Like, I feel yeah. like she could have done something like that instead. But 
Yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like this I, one's I, nuanced. Yeah. I think this one is another. They both kind of suck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody sucks here. Okay. Yeah. Anyways. She, she should have shared earlier and his reaction was extreme. Yeah. Yeah. I don't so. I don't think it was applicable to the situation. Are there no. any uh, comments or updates that you can see? Not that I could see. Just that people are on kind of in the same vein. It's fine that you had a separate account, but like if you, I think if you guys are struggling. I think it's mm-hmm. smart to keep you know, a bank account separate, except for like having yeah. one that's meant for like bills, bills. and stuff. Mm-hmm. I think it's really important to have that like independence of your own bank account mm-hmm. where like yeah. your significant other doesn't really see the kind of money that you have because fuck, like what if you're buying him a surprise present or something like you don't yeah and you don't want to be beholden to your partner financially that's not safe for anyone yeah Yeah. so so anyways okay well next um this one's on instagram so not sure if it's available still in am i the asshole usually when they're found like this they're not available on the site anymore for whatever reason Mm -hmm. okay Am I the asshole for announcing my pregnancy at my much older sister's birthday lunch? I, female 25, has an older sister who is 30 years old. We have never gotten along growing up, and I consider her my first bully. Growing up, she always commented on my weight and how I look. Because of the consistent bullying, I spent most of my time with my dad and stepmother who gladly took me in. Since I was still young, I was basically forced to visit my mom, and I dreaded the weekends I had to visit. My mother was never the problem, but she would let my sister get away with doing horrible things to me. When I turned 14, I was finally able to live with my dad and stepmom full time, but I did keep in contact with my mom. I didn't start visiting her home until I was 18. Anyways, my mother decided to set up a birthday dinner for my older sister. She invited both me and my husband, so we decided that we would go because I hadn't seen my mother since 2021 and I did miss her. Anyways, everything was going well. The food was amazing, and I got to see the family that I haven't seen in years. Well, it was amazing until everyone was eating. I had finished my food, and I was still hungry, so I asked my mother if it was okay to get more since everyone had gotten their first helping. Some were getting seconds already. I know where this is going. My mother, of course, said, help myself, so I got up and started making myself a plate. It was going okay until my older sister loudly said, shouldn't you stop eating so much? You look like you you're Her gaining. Her sister so much made a fat joke. Yeah, stitch yourself. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> this is gonna be an automatic not the asshole for me from this point. <laughs> <on. laughs> just continue. <laughs> um, I'm literally three months pregnant. Only have a tiny belly, and most people would think I'm bloated. I looked around, and everyone was looking at me. So I said, "Thanks for your concern, but I'm actually eating for two right now." Immediately, everyone started getting up and congratulating my husband and me while my sister just sat there looking dumb. Every conversation was about my pregnancy, and nobody seemed interested in my sister. Soon after, me and my husband left, and we immediately got a text from my sister saying I was an asshole, and I intentionally tried to ruin her day. I don't feel bad, but regardless of how I feel, am I the asshole? No. No. Uh, Immediately not the asshole. One, that's fucking funny. Her sister walked into it. Like, you did it to yourself. Two... Like, she wasn't planning on announcing it at all. No. Like, from what I can tell, she was not going to say it. But because you you came at her with a snarky attitude, like... She took advantage of the situation, which is totally fine. I was like, I would do the same thing. I'd be like, thank you. I I am pregnant, actually. Like... Not the asshole. Not Not the asshole. No. The sister can fuck right off. Uh Uh-huh. God, that's so funny. Some of the comments are so funny. They're like, obviously, you're the younger sister intentionally planned to be pregnant. So that way mm-hmm. she would be showing just enough at your birthday party to ruin it. Like, get, obviously, sort of, like get narcissistic, your high horse, like delusional. Obviously, we know, like, it's not appropriate to make announcements at like events like this, birthdays, yeah. weddings, other engagement parties, other like baby showers, bridal parties. At least like not without talking to whoever yes. the yeah. event is for. But like, if she's going to be a bitch, yeah, fuck it. This, is, it this is an exception to the rule. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you get. Because her I sister mean, literally walked 
directly into that one. She did. She ruined mm-hmm. her own birthday. Y'all know I'm a slut for immediate karma. It's like, no don't make a comment about your fucking sister's weight. No. She deserved it. What a cunt. Sorry. It's fine. <laughs> Anyways. Miss? I think that was pretty cut and dry for all of us. Let's just yeah. roll right on along. Is it my turn? It is. Yes. Turn. Okay. Um. <clears throat> Am I the asshole for not checking in on my brother's surrogate when I went on a bachelorette party in Cancun? <laughs> Hold on real quickly before you get into that. I was looking at my other one that you sent sent me and there's a trigger warning and I didn't look at it and I looked at it just now. And it's race fetishism. So obviously I have to be the one to read this. I didn't even like, <laughs> I literally just sent you whatever Emily gave me. I didn't even like realize. <laughs> So, looking forward to that. Anyway. Oh, my God. Okay, so, am I the asshole for not checking in on my brother's surrogate when I went on a bachelorette party in Cancun? This one has 4.8, like, 4.8K upvotes. Up mm-hmm. um, and the overall vote is not the asshole. Mm. Okay. okay. One of my best friends is having her bachelorette party in Cancun, Mexico. And this is my first time outside of Niagara Falls ever leaving the country, and I am super excited to go. Hey, I've been to Niagara Falls. I told my family this, and my older brother is like, oh, can you please check in on our surrogate? She is in Cancun. Why is your surrogate in Cancun, sir? When I first heard it, I was like, sure. But then I found out that his surrogate is is a two-hour drive from Cancun and doesn't live in the safest neighborhood, and I would need to get a driver. Also, the bachelorette party has a full itinerary, and I am only there for three and a half days. I told my brother that I won't be able to make it, and he freaks out on me and is like, you don't care about my family. What happens if Mary, fake name for the surrogate, what happens if Mary's house is filthy and your future niece is born sickly? He starts going on how it's not even a big deal and starts saying what is more important, having fun with friends or family. To me, it was it really rubbed me the wrong way. For one, if he cares so much, he can fly down there right now. His partner is much older and really wealthy, and they go on vacation every couple of months, and they just come came back from Portugal. Like, they could have gone to check in on their surrogate. I'm sorry. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> and... They already have her sharing her location and have her send a picture of each meal she eats. And they even got her a Fitbit. Like, they're tracking her so much. Me not checking in on her house is not going to change anything. I know I initially said yes, but to me, I feel like they are being really unfair here. Am I the asshole? No. No, You're not. They're so... What the fuck? Why is their surrogate not living in the same country as them? For (sighs) one. Yeah. But also, like... the The top comment... Not the asshole, but I am. Am I the only one who feels weird about Americans using a surrogate in Mexico? No, no, you're not the only one that feels weird. That's gross and predatory, and they don't deserve that baby. I hope somebody reports their ass. The biggest worry is that they the she lives in filth. Like, then move her. If you were so worried about it, then why did you choose her? If you can afford to go on vacation every couple of months, if she could easily move in with you. Like, you can easily take care of the situation. You don't even have to move her to you. You can put her in a better situation if you feel like whatever she's living in isn't healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Get her on Airbnb yeah. for nine months. Yeah. Like, if you're going to be to the point where you're making her wear a Fitbit and you're tracking her meals, move her somewhere where she has access to a chef. Yeah. But also, like, that uh, that poor woman. How long ago was this posted? yesterday one day ago mama if you're out yeah. there in the world and you didn't sign a contract run run get your ass out of there baby and run yeah, Call no, the she's not, god she's not the asshole. and the fact that like he expects his sister to drive three and a half like to drive what two hours away from where she's staying into no. the country to go check on this person that's four hours round trip. That's half yeah. the day. No. And if, like, you have, like, a set itinerary, you can't just be, like... And I'm sorry. It's you've a already, you've probably already paid for it. 
it's a bachelorette yeah. party. Like, there are excursions planned. Like, it is not a time for you to be outgoing and doing your own thing. Like, you are there yeah, for the no. bride. And they have and a whole thing planned out. Like... It'd be different if, like, she lived, like, within walking distance of wherever they're going to be. Yeah. And, like, she could, like, like, quickly run over. In, like, a 30-minute drive, like, yeah, okay, like, 30 minutes, like, I can wake up early and go hop over there. Yeah. Yeah. But also, like, again, if they're that fucking worried, if they're that fucking worried, go and see her yourself. Yeah. Like, why aren't you checking on her? Yeah. You're just going to go the whole nine months and she's just going to have this baby in Cancun and then you're just going to go down there and grab it? Like, what? That sounds like human trafficking. Yeah. I'm willing to bet that they did not find the surrogate through the the most legal of means. Probably not. I would bet money on it. I'm just like, what the fuck? Your brother is a dickhead and you need to cut him off. Yes. And, like, yeah. for him and to be, like, can... trying to guilt her, being, like, well, what? how would you feel if your niece was living in this? I'd be, like, I don't know. How would you feel as a father if you allowed your, your daughter to be born in that situation? Maybe you should come out here. I'm, like, in yeah. most cases, if a child is born sickly, that is not due to a living situation really? while they were pregnant. No. It is due to the genes that are given to them by their parents. This is... This is... This is why I can't be dealing with people like this. Because if I got that phone call, I'd be like, mm, sounds like it's a you problem. Bye. <laughs> it's like, you know, you guys just went to Portugal. I'm sure you can afford a plane ticket down to Cancun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're flying out every hour on the hour from most southern states. What Jesus. a fucking dick bag. You know what, girlfriend? Live your best life. Continue on with your bachelorette party. Have fun. You're not the asshole. Your brother is a dick bag. I hope that they don't get to keep that kid and that kid ends up somewhere with a happy, loving family that clearly deserves it more than they do. Your brother should not be a parent. No. Based on this interaction alone, your brother should not be a parent. No. Your brother and I feel for awful expecting for that. you to do that on your yeah. time off. And I feel bad for that surrogate because, again, they're, they're, they were probably very predatory and took advantage of her and... God knows what her living situation is. Again, mama. If you didn't if you don't have a legally binding contract, run. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. God. Clearly very feel very strongly about that. Yeah. One. Are we ready for the next one? Yes. Okay. Am I the asshole for my for asking my 25 male girlfriend, 29 female, to make my plate of food differently than she was serving to others? So, <laughs> so I recently became official with a lady I've been dating for six months. We decided to have the first barbecue of the nice summer weather in our area at her place. We don't live together currently. She decided to make steaks and baked potatoes, and I made some side salads, and I was also responsible for the drinks and chips. As my girlfriend got cooking, it just panned out that she ended up plating and serving to people as her steaks finished resting. When I went over to watch her plating, I noticed she had put butter and herbs and stuff all over the steaks. My family doesn't do this, and I've never seen it done this way, so I asked her politely if she could put mine aside and I would do my fixings. I just want my steak with ketchup. I'm pretty plain. Both she, her sister, and her dad give me pointed looks. I know. I know. I know. (laughs) Let me me finish. Let me finish. (laughs) <laughs> later that evening she felt it, that it was rude to the chef her in this instance to ask for my food separately and that she wished I would have just trusted her to make me a nice plate of food and that I shouldn't do that when I'm a guest anywhere I fairly commonly and politely ask for my food to be made differently slash more plain when I'm a guest somewhere or at a restaurant because I generally prefer plain food I didn't think this was rude am I the asshole for Asking for my own food to be served differently outside my own home. There is an update. It's from two days. The whole thing's from two days ago. It just says, I asked my girlfriend for my own food to be made differently than what she was serving to others. I'm wondering if I'm the asshole for asking slash expecting a host to make my plate differently upon my request. I thought about it and realized I can't decide if this is an asshole thing or not, as I do see how expecting a host to change their dish for you could be an inconvenience to them. Okay. Not the Dr. asshole. Victoria and I had the same reaction when you said, <laughs> "I knew where that was going." When he said he didn't want butter and herbs, I'm like, "Please don't yeah. tell me, please don't." And you said ketchup, and I'm like, <laughs> "The first ca- comment yeah. is yes, the asshole for putting ketchup on steak." <laughs> Point blank. Okay, yeah, he is an asshole for putting ketchup on steak. 
but not the asshole for asking for his steak to be made plain. Unless you're at like a five star Michelin rated restaurant, like don't obviously don't change the menu at some place like that unless it's like an allergy related thing because mm-hmm. those are made by world renowned chefs. Like they're made to be eaten a specific way. You're at mm-hmm. home with your girlfriend and her family. It's not that big of a deal to yeah. ask, like, hey, can you not put these herbs on? What if he was allergic to something? Yeah. Like, which I would hope that in that situation, she wouldn't be, like, weird about it. But, like, that's such that's such a weird thing to be, like, upset I about. Think, like, we're flex, but okay. Yeah. I think definitely, you know, it, it could upset the host. And I'm glad that mm-hmm. he acknowledged that in his update. Mm-hmm. Um, one, his girlfriend should have known that he, like, how long you guys together because she should know how you eat at this point. Um, two, also, based on the ketchup, I'm assuming this is a white man. Yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> but also, he could have asked ahead of time. But I'll, I think you know, from what I've gleamed, he said that he would make like just set the steak aside and like I'll cook it. Yeah, that he would do it mm-hmm. himself. He wasn't expecting yeah. her to cook a completely different steak for him. Right. Exactly. Um, I personally would say nobody's the asshole here. I don't know. I think the girlfriend's reaction is a little extreme. But I feel like if we were in that situation, like, I would get upset, too, in the initial moment. Like, I'm like, I planned mm-hmm. this whole meal. Like, and he obviously didn't say something ahead of time. Yeah. Like I he just should have right then and there. Time. Like I would, I would get upset too. Like I probably would have a, a reaction like that. Not probably not as severe, but like I would have had a reaction to it as well. I would have been like, yeah. yeah. But it's it's the difference from saying from being upset and being like, okay, I planned this for a very for it to be a specific way. This for you. Yeah. And like being initially upset to going on to say that your boyfriend is a complete asshole for yeah. having a specific dietary preference. Like oh. I mean, for me with my steaks. Unless it's a very specific set of circumstances, I usually eat my steaks with the exact same thing every time. Mm-hmm. And that's just how I am. It's how I like to have my steak. So mm-hmm. I would probably also be the person to be like, hey. But you're also you're also the kind of person who would say something ahead of time. Yeah. You yeah that is fair. Very, you would make it very aware that you're like, I'm picky about how I eat certain this certain thing. Um mm-hmm what is your plan for it and if it's different from how I eat it like please let me help you in the kitchen because I can prepare something myself and I can help you like if he's already yeah. making the salad like he can help make those things well too. and he did make help make other food yeah so yeah. he was already there so like the fact that he didn't say something I think is what him not saying something to her is why I would say nobody's really the asshole here like it, this, the whole situation sucks nobody's the asshole because Mm -hmm. he wasn't upfront about his how he was about it given she should have known if you guys are in a relationship she should know your Mm -hmm. dietary habits at this point um yeah but ultimately if he's not going to say something then he is guaranteed a reaction from his girlfriend who is hosting other people as well like Mm -hmm. she's probably a stressful day trying to plan this thing and he just like throws this, this at her just randomly as she's cooking I mean, I don't, I just don't see the the reason to be as, because it's not as if, like, she had injected things into the steak and had mm-hmm. to remove, like, it's literally, you just, you grill the steak and you base it, you put the herbs on it. And if you're mm-hmm. not going to do that, you just grill it and then you're done and that's it. Mm-hmm. And I guess that's the reason why I just don't understand such an extreme reaction on the family's part. And, like... If I knew something was be ma- being made in a specific way, then yes, I might say something beforehand. But if it's just like like literally grilling steaks or making hamburgers, like my uncle, for instance, when he makes hamburgers, he adds like a bunch of spices and stuff to it. And I like I'll forget to say something mm-hmm. beforehand because it's hamburgers. But then if I notice that he's making more after he's already made some, I'll be like, hey, can you just leave those off of mine? Mm -hmm. and it's cool and like there's no problem so i guess i i'm just too straightforward of a person in some situations to like understand why she was that worked up about it you know yeah 
but I, I don't think she's like an asshole. I, I just don't understand the extreme reaction. Mm-hmm. So that's valid. I have no other comments. <laughs> like, eh. don't put ketchup on your steak. That's nice. Yeah, that's fucking weird, dude. You need to stop. That. <laughs> that's like some five year old stuff. <laughs> <laughs> So, anyways. Mm-hmm. All right. One more? One. one more real quick. One more. Squeeze it in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is from May 19th. This one was deleted by the mods, but is preserved in a post on r slash wedding shaming. Um, this one does. This is currently in the best of Redditor updates. This and the trigger warning, as I said earlier, is race fetishism. So, would I be the asshole for dropping out of a wedding when it's two weeks away? I'm 29 male and have a long-term girlfriend of three years, Hannah. My friend Kyle is getting married later this year. I agreed to be a groomsman. Not a Kyle. <laughs> so, it's me, him, and three other dudes. I was disappointed when I found out that I wouldn't have a plus one for the wedding. But at the time, I thought that went the same for the other guys. Oh, no. Oh, no. Come to find out last weekend that the three other groomsmen do have plus ones. Two of them have been in relationships for less time combined than me. The other guy is single and was complaining about not finding a date to bring on Tinder, which is how I found out. I asked Kyle what's going on. Why do they have plus ones, but I can't bring Hannah? I find out this. So I'm walking down the aisle with the bride's sister, Lisa. Lisa is developmentally disabled. Oh my god, wait. I've heard this one on TikTok before. Oh no. (laughs) She's in her 20s, but mentally she's about 10 years old. Kyle says it's because they don't want to piss off Lisa. Her parents figure that she will never marry or have a boyfriend, so they want me to come solo to give Lisa the impression that I'm single. Basically, they want me to be a pretend boyfriend for Lisa. If I come with Hannah, that will make her jealous. I'm not really comfortable with this. Lisa is a nice girl, but I don't like that I'm tricking her into thinking I'm someone that I'm not. It's scummy to make someone believe I'm her boyfriend when I'm not. Plus, what if Lisa meets Hannah in the future and finds out we're together? She's already gotten into trouble in her adult care group for fighting with another girl over a guy. I told Kyle and his fiancee, Claire, that I'm not okay with this. They told me I need to suck it up for a day because this will mean a lot to Lisa. I'm not comfortable playing pretend boyfriend, especially for someone who thinks we are the real deal. I want to drop out at this point. Wedding is two weeks away. Would I be the asshole? Edit. You guys are right. This is really fucked. I called Kyle just now and told him we need to talk face to face. I'll update if anything happens. Edit two. I'm about to confront Kyle. Pray for me. (laughs) There is an update for this one. Give it to me. Give it. I'm ready. (laughs) May 20th. So this is the day after. Oh, God. (laughs) Um, Edit three. I'm going to need some time to calm down. My friendship with Kyle is over. And whoever said that I got roped in because Lisa had a crush on me, you win. I'll fill you in when I have had a moment. I feel sick right now. Edit four. I think I can say what happened earlier this evening. The more I read everyone's answers, the more I realize this was really fucked up. I already had a feeling that this whole Lisa wedding date situation was messed up, but reading everyone's comments reinforced it. I told Kyle that we had to talk and he agreed. We met at his house. Claire was there. Lisa wasn't. Thank God. Basically, I told them I was dropping out of the wedding. I told them that setting me up as Lisa's fake boyfriend was beyond messed up. What did they think that was going to happen after the wedding? Was I supposed to continue the charade or dump her, break her heart, and be the bad guy? Claire tried to explain what was happening. Something about how Lisa was upset and angry that she wasn't the one getting married. That wasn't the part that pissed me off. No. Want to know why I got offered up? Oh, no! (laughs) Oh, no. It's because Lisa loves K-pop and is obsessed with Asian guys. I'm Japanese American. Oh, no. 
No. So that's why I got roped into being her fake date and not my single friend who has to rely on Tinder to find someone. It's all some tick- sick attempt at making Lisa feel better by hooking her up with the only Asian guy they knew. At that point, I had enough. I told Kyle and Claire that it was over. I wasn't going to the wedding. I never wanted to speak with or see them again. There was a lot of screaming and crying. Claire asked me why I wouldn't why I would do this to her sister. I barely even know Lisa except for the few times that we were that were wedding related. And that's where things stand. I don't know if they're going to try and paint me as the bad guy who broke Lisa's heart. I already told the guys that I'm not coming and why. <clears throat> who knows what the fallout from that will be. I spent the rest of the night trying to get a grip on myself. I still feel kind of queasy from this whole thing. This feels like one sick joke. I feel bad for Lisa because while I got out, she's still stuck with that shitty family. I think I'm going to spend Saturday trying to put this behind me with beer and a Brooklyn Nine-Nine marathon. Thank you guys for your help. At least I know there are people out there who also think this is a terrible fucking idea. Oh, I also asked why not hook up Lisa with Tucker, the single friend, using Tinder for dates. It's because she said he was too ugly and hated his beard. I'm not going to tell Tucker that. He's going to find out eventually. (laughs) Dear God. Jesus. Yeah, no, he's not the asshole. Nope. Definitely not the asshole. Nope. Not the asshole. Your friends suck. Your friends are terrible. Like, that was bother your friendship is over. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, some of the comments. Why would why would you do this to my sister? I did it. You did. Another horrifying gem. Mentally, she's about 10 years old. So, of course, it makes sense to, to set her up with a 29-year-old man. Nope. You're discriminating against her by not enabling her racism, says every racist al- asshole out there. <laughs> I oh my God. That was not where I thought this was going. No. no. Not I thought at they all. were initially it was like against the girlfriend that they didn't yeah. want. Uh-huh. That's what I thought too. That is so wrong on so That's many fucking levels. So fucked up. They're the assholes. Yeah. Not this guy. Well, my assumption is is that that wedding should have happened this past week. Yeah. If that yeah. was ha- if that was they said 2 weeks on what May 19th. Yeah. That should have yeah, happened this last week. weekend. Yeah. I wonder Shit. how that wedding went. Oh god. They're going to get divorced. That was horrible. That's terrible. Yeah, who that's does that to their horrifying. friend. And who does that to their sibling? Who does that to anyone? Like Yeah. To like, anyone you I care under- about. Like, I under- I fully understand she's developmentally disabled. Mm-hmm. And 10-year-old, like, actual 10-year-olds don't understand why fetishizing somebody, especially mm-hmm. for their race, is wrong. I- I'm fully aware that a 10-year-old would not understand why that's incorrect. Yeah. But knowing that, as fully developed adults... They should be able to sit down and have a conversation in a way with her that makes her understand, like, hey, that's not okay. Like, he's not your boyfriend. You'll find love eventually. It happens for everyone. Like, have a conversation with her and be Mm -hmm. honest. And also, like, if she's upset that it's your wedding and not hers, like, that's an easy conversation to kind of explain to them. Like, if she's Mm -hmm. mentally 10 years old, she has still has a comprehension ability in there. Like, it's not like you're talking to a five-year-old. And not not only that, I've seen many a wedding, similar circumstances where there is a sibling that has some kind of disability who had, who they highlighted in some way that made it just as special of a day for them without having to tear anybody else down or make it any less of a wedding like, for the people who have married. a special dance with the bride and her sister. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, like I said, a father daughter dance, like it's a, the two of them dancing. Yes. Like, so she gets to feel special on that day in a way that's not compromising anyone. Yep. Yeah. There are just much better ways to go around it. Also the racism within this couple. Yeah. So bad. subtle. But it's, it, there. but it's there. Yeah, it's there. It's there. 
And this is why I always like to say racism isn't always just calling somebody a slur. It can be subtle like this, too. There are always mm-hmm. inherent biases that people don't know about. Like, again, to get real personal, just because my mom has a biracial child does not mean that she's also not racist because she is. Hey, I have that conversation all the time. Riley, you see Riley? You see my parents, my family? Like, just So, because- like, kudos to you, dude, for standing up for yourself. I'm sorry that it took this massive Reddit post to, like, realize that you needed to stand your ground. I'm mm-hmm. glad that you did because that's just so fucking gross mm-hmm. on so many levels. And I hope that their friends like backed him and were like, no, that's fucked up, dude. And it's like, it would have been one thing if they were like, hey, we need you to walk down the aisle with our sister. Like, sorry, she's, you know, she's got it in her mind that you're her boyfriend, even though you're not. Mm-hmm. Like, we'll clarify this for her. And then like, that would have been one thing. But they were full on like, no, feed into the delusion. Yeah. Gross. I feel dirty. (laughs) What a way to end it. (laughs) Seriously. Man. Didn't even plan it that way. Gosh. Well, if you guys have any other good Am I the asshole stories? Let us know. Let us Do know you what you thought like about these ones. kinds of episodes. Like, we'll yeah, do more. I mean, we'll do more regardless of whether you like them or not. Yeah, this is also <laughs> just as much for us as it is for you. But we can do even more than the ones that we already have planned. If you mm-hmm. guys like them, um, and if you guys want us to see from other subreddits, we can do that too. Um, but yeah, let us know what you guys thought about these stories. I'm curious to see how everyone felt because um, I feel dirty now <laughs> I feel like I wanted let's go back to ketchup guy <laughs> it's so simple Listen. it's so simple no assholes you're just really weird for wanting ketchup on your steak like please don't tell me you eat it you eat it well done too I don't want to know Ugh. gosh that's wow. not even anyways probably adds just like a little sprinkle of salt and it's like it's spicy <laughs> he's like i, I eat plain food and i'm just like oh honey boo boo that's not plain. don't that's say not that plain. do you know what a spice is no not. human coriander God. salt pepper <laughs> turmeric something something damn anyway, thanks for listening let us know what you guys want to see more of um, you can hit us up on Instagram or our Gmail, in the Discord server, anywhere we stream on. There's so many places to reach us at this point. Like, we make it easy. So, anyways, for now, Kira, will you take us out with an affirmation? It will. So today's affirmation is, my confidence knows no limits as I share my gifts with the world. Oh. There you it is. <laughs> you are a gift to the world. We all are gifts to the world. I'm Victoria, Catalan. Uh, I'm. Uh, I highly doubt that. I'm, Victoria, <laughs> I'm a gift. I'm a gift. <laughs> I'm a demon, is what I am. No, I am holds, karmic retribution. You know what holds up this halo? My horns. Horn. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all so much for joining us. Make sure to tune in on Tasty Tuesdays and Thursday Thursdays for all new episodes. Be sure to subscribe and follow our socials listed in the description. Please make sure you like, rate, and leave a review for the podcast to help boost us across the platforms. Have a lovely day. And remember, stay thirsty, bitches. Bye.